Welcome to Psychic Holistic Spotlight. I'm Bill Hannon, your host tonight with uh, co-host Josie Way. Tonight we're going to be interviewing Lee Drescher from the Cape. And I would suggest that if you have a DVR or some ways of recording this, you might be very interested in doing so because she's going to be addressing an issue that we very rarely have on the show, and that's a palmist. So, hello, Lee. Good to meet you. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Right, right. I'm glad you had an uneventful ride from the Cape today. I was very lucky. They're fixing the Sagamore Bridge, and I thought I would be stuck, but I left early, and I got here. I got through Providence. I got through New Bedford. Wow. And, uh, and, and over the bridge and down 95, and I understand there was an accident a little later, and mm -hmm. so I was very lucky. We, we got all the residue. <laughs> of the accident, yes. Uh, so could you give us a little background as to um, what you've done over the... When you started palmistry or... You know. Okay, well, I've been involved in the spirituals church for probably over 20 years a long, long time. And I actually have taken the healing and mediumship courses. Uh, and I uh, studied at the Plymouth Church mm -hmm. and at the Onset Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've done mediumship. And then maybe 10 years ago, actually in Onset, a palmist came and did a course and that's a wonderful thing about the spiritualist church. They, they mm. have, they do chakras and auras, and and they have courses on all kinds of wonderful things. And this woman came from Maine, and she was really excellent. And uh, I think it was like a weekend seminar. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, maybe I'm going to try this. But palmistry is very, very complicated. Oh, is it? It is extremely complicated. There are some different theories. And I think it really takes years of learning. And there also, there aren't a lot of palmists around to tell Thank you, this is right and that's right mm. and so forth. But I had the course with her and then I've read a number of books, and I actually have developed a course which I taught last summer at the Wigwam, and I will be offering it again wow. oh, nice. on basic palmistry. And I really call myself an amateur. But when I do readings, I like to start with hands. Mm. And palmistry is not only looking at the lines, not only looking at the lifeline, the headline, and, and the heart line. It's looking at the shape of people's hands. Mm -hmm. And very interestingly, now it's kind of fun for me to just look at people when they have their hands and see what mm -hmm. kind of a hand they have. Mm -hmm. And actually... He has very nice hands. You have... You have a fire hand. You have a really big hand. He's a fire <laughs> sign. That's my nickname. <laughs> hands, hands, hand. <laughs> and actually, you, your your thumb, you, you, how your thumb is, is very important, and the shape of it is mm -hmm. very important, mm -hmm. and the shape of your fingers, and your fingers all have a name. There's your thumb your Saturn finger, your Jupiter finger, your Apollo finger, and your Mercury finger. And the Jupiter finger is about being a leader and being in charge. And when you, when you have a big Jupiter finger, you're, you're an in charge kind of person. I, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> your Saturn finger if you know Saturn astrologically, is the finger, Saturn is the taskmaster, mm -hmm. and you have to do things right. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, about sort of organization and discipline. Mm -hmm. The Apollo finger is, is about the arts and music and also about the family. Okay. And the little finger is Mercury and Mercury is about communication. Uh -huh. And the shape of these fingers are important. If your mm -hmm. finger is big, then maybe you're you're a leader type person. If you're if you're uh, if your major Jupiter finger is small, maybe you're not a leadership type mm -hmm. of person. I've heard of people talking about the length of the fingers in relationship to the other fingers. Yeah, it's, that. There's is that, does that play that. into that? Yeah, or? absolutely. And there are just so many details, it's, it's almost impossible to remember them all. But yes, wow. if your Saturn finger is tall, you're perhaps a more analytic type of person. Mm -hmm. And if your Apollo finger is long, you're more of an artist. Mm -hmm. And if you're... Uh, if your if your uh, Jupiter finger, Jupiter. and this is sometimes confusing Jupiter, because your Saturn, Jupiter's finger Apollo, is not always Mercury. the biggest finger, but it is it's big in what it does. It, it's the leader. Mm -hmm. It's the the team leader. The person. Oh, is that why people have a tendency charge, to point fingers like at somebody? Le like Leo. Yeah, <laughs> it's. I'm a Leo. And he's <laughs> born in the year of the rabbit. <laughs> what date? July 29th. Oh, so, so you're, you're at the beginning. I'm you're at the, at the cusp, beginning yeah. of the Leo and, and a little bit close to cancer. Yes. Uh, and how your thumb is, if your thumb is, if you have a big thumb, you're capable of big tasks. Yeah. And if you have a, a small thumb, you, you might not be very capable. I'm looking your guitar fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I this hand is kind of deformed and it's not a very good example because this thumb has been broken twice and it it wow. sticks out in a weird way and it has a chip in it. And then this finger never got straight because Oh, I see. Yeah. This was uh, pulled by, by dogs, actually, oh. two times by dogs. They just pulled it and they broke it. And so my right hand is a little bit messed up. <laughs> is, that, is that your but dominant hand? But it still hand? works. It is my It's a dominant. hand with character. It is my, and that's what she said about my hand. She said, you know, that these traits go into who you are, mm -hmm. and actually there's there's a knob down here that musicians have, mm -hmm. and I am a bit of a musician. Uh, also, if your fingers like curve towards another finger, uh, and there are just so many things, and then there are the lines. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, there are four kinds of hands. Okay. There's a fire hand with a large palm and short fingers. And then there's a chubby. <laughs> no, but you you have longer fingers. Oh, you have a huge thumb. I, I, <laughs> you have a huge thumb. You, you I must... worked for the state when I was <laughs> the, it, the computer. It, it, it also means that you're good with people, that you, mm. and I believe you're a social worker. Yeah. But it, it means that you're very good with people, and people are important to you. And your fingers are a little bit longer and a little more dainty. I would say that you have an air hand, and an air hand is where I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that would make sense. Yeah. Although your sign is not always corresponding to your hand. No. But um, you have you have more delicate fingers, and you like beautiful things, and you are you have ideas. Sort of, your ideals are high. You have high ideals. 
mm. and in a world that sometimes and you, you are. I know that you're very concerned with the psychic world, and yes. that would be indicated in your hands. Mm. Uh, if you have really long fingers and a really long palm, that's a water hand. That means that you're very emotional and you kind of get carried away by your emotions sometimes, mm -hmm. and that you're and you like beauty. Uh, but that you're an emotional person. Mm -hmm. And then there's the earth hand, and that is the square, flat hand. And mm -hmm. these are the people who do the nitty gritty jobs. These mm -hmm. are the people who do the grunt work, and you can count on them, and they're always gonna be there. So that these are the four basic hands. Now, in a lot of books, they talk about the mixed hand and the conic hand, and it, it's just, spatulate hand and the I'm, spatulate hand with the, the where the, the fingers the, the look got, like little spoons. Yes, where the fingers are bigger at the top, and there are all kinds of variations hmm. on this. This sounds very interesting. And I, again, it's it's, I feel it takes a lifetime to learn all of the ins and outs and the details mm -hmm. of palmistry. And so I like to start a reading by looking at a person's hand, figuring out what kind of hand it is. Uh, like the four kinds of hands, they go along with if you've ever taken lessons in sales, there's the emotional person, and there's the analytic person, and there's the, um, well, mainly there's the emotional and the analytic but also there's the detail person, um, and the, the sort of dependent earth person, mm -hmm. and there's the person with, with high ideals and airy thoughts. And so it's, it's interesting. And then p people think that it's just the lines in your hands. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. These are called phalanxes. The right. sections of That's your right. fingers mm -hmm. are called phalanxes. And if the bottom one is long, it means that you're good at something. And if the middle one is long, mm -hmm. you're in the top one. And there's just so much mm -hmm. to remember that it- Look how tiny that one is. And, and that might mean something about communication. Mm that little space there <laughs> and yet when and i was in bas when i was in high school i mean i used to be able to bounce the basketball and just grip it on top you know so you know i but i could feel that in order to get that i actually had to stretch my fingers and by doing this over a period of time it actually helped me palm the ball a lot easier you know take a shot and whatever you know so but I mean, you know, the, I honestly don't believe I could do that now, simply because I think my hand has gotten a little squattish compared to how it used to be. Is that is is that why they called you hands? Because you have such big hands. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, in fact, it wasn't the basketball; it was the football. I, I was the receiver. Receiver. So you know, I it was easy. You had the hands. Easier. I had the hands, right? That's the nickname. Like I said before. People still call me when they see me on the street, hey, Hans, how you doing? You know, so, but yeah, so now what so, are the lines? Okay, of, so <laughs> the lines, uh, okay, so uh, your dominant hand, the lines are clearer, much clearer, and on a person you can tell which hand is the dominant hand because the lines are much more di distinct and clear sure, sure. and cut in. Right. And Now you so, look like you have a, a working hand, but then I, I, I see this area right here and it's, that looks so much different than mine. I, why is, why would something Actually like this, that means these lines are like worries and cares. Okay. It looks like you have one really big worry and care in your life mm. and some other details. Mm -hmm. I think I have a little, lot of little worries. I'm kind of a worrier. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And so your lifeline curves around, starts here and it curves around and comes down 
to your wrist. This one right here. And the, yes, that okay. your lifeline curves around your thumb. Okay, yeah. And actually, mm -hmm. I thought that I had another, well I do, another lifeline. Sometimes people have a life, another line inside of the lifeline and that means that you have protection and that there's someone protecting you, Good for like, you. like an angel. Yeah, I have no uh, doubt. I, I, I know that's true for me. And but uh, I don't see no, it there. Look, I, well, I see that could be a fate line, though. Okay. This line, there, there's something significant in your life that mm -hmm. goes on that you have a special care in your life, maybe two, mm -hmm. but one. Okay, that's interesting. I'll keep myself open to that. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you have that second line, it's protection. Mm -hmm. And then there's your lifeline. And then after that is your fate line. Your fate. And fate. And, and I notice when I'm reading people that the fate line, and it kind of runs up, mm -hmm. it, it will run to the Saturn finger. If you're, mm -hmm. you're a taskmaster and an analytic and a worker, it will run to the Jupiter finger if you're more of a leader, and it will run to the Apollo finger if you're more of an artist and a family person. And it's amazing when I do readings at a fair, often if the fate line is, is strong, the, the people will say that they're working, I'll say, and they're working at a job and that their work is really important to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it shows up that way, that they, they are working. Mm -hmm. uh, then going across your hand, here's your headline. This one here? Yeah, the lower one. And the, Yeah, this is your headline. Yeah. Okay. And that's your heart line. Okay. And and okay, so often like you can tell whether the person again is a, an emotional person, the heart line is stronger and the headline is not as strong oh. or whether whether they're more of a thinker and more of a mental practical mm -hmm. kind of person. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have a very strong fate line that runs right up to your your Saturn finger. I would say that you are a man of duty. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have something going across your headline. That's interesting, yeah. Uh, I would say that you have a very a strong heart and, and that you care deeply about people mm -hmm. and Something is going on with your, your head. <laughs> but by that I mean you, you have a couple of different interests and particularly in later life. Right, it's, I would it's say so. It's gonna branch this. off, I see two, two differences, two right. concerns that you have. Right, right. Well, I've, I've been very interested in helping people with hands-on healing over the years. And right now, a lot of people I meet are people that are financially destitute because of these things that they're dealing with and, and the industry taking so much money from them. I see myself working, actually helping people with foreclosures and legal issues. Um, so, you know, that's, I, I, I could see what you're saying. Those are two my people here who know me yeah. know I'm motivated to help people this way. Well, I would say people are very lucky and, and you, that you are a gift to hmm. society and the world. And, and you take your herbal skills. Oh, yes. Also. Yes. Yes, to, right, right. Well, that's people. part, again, all three of those come, come together, basically trying to balance everything out. You mentioned similar, I mean, similar size or strength of the head and the heart. And I could see that both of those tie together in my path. They do definitely tie in it. There's like, there's 
often there's one line between the head and the heart, but you have two. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say that they do. They join and they tie, very much yeah. join and tie in. Mm -hmm. I see that. How, it's, how it just cuts across there. Yes, there. and that happens a lot. You have Your lifeline runs into your headline. You have some worries. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> some problems that you're dealing with. Uh, you are, you have, and, and again, you're a social worker, but I see lines like running to Apollo. It's interesting, I don't, this is your dominant hand, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but I see that you deal with families, but that you also deal with with um, some kind of detail work as well, that you take care of papers done, and det I, detail work. I can see that you... Yeah, this, well, th the other passion in my life is beauty and design right. and... Well, this Balance goes to and Apollo, harmony. right? And that's Apollo. You know, it did. They, when I'm tired and I've finished doing something, if I get another little idea, I'm off and running again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The angels work with me very much with that. I'm sure they do. They have yes. fun with me. <laughs> I'm sure they do. But just hold your hand like this. Okay. You're, I have a tremor. You're a people person, but you're not a really social person. You don't have to have people to, to uh, fulfill you. You're, you're okay. You, you can be by yourself and be fulfilled. I am social in one aspect that people don't always think it, that's social. I listen to people. That's, a, that's the number one thing. That's and people don't listen to each other. No. <laughs> Angels tell us that communication, that is the biggest problem. Of course. Nobody's listening because to anybody. Because you got two ears and only one mouth. So <laughs> shut up and listen. <laughs> and it's worse now, than ever now with technology and kids. And it's mm -hmm. so important. And um, listening is a talent. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's harder to listen than it is to talk. Because everybody... I find it is. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Time goes faster when you're talking. <laughs> so talking about communication and talking and listening, how would somebody be able to get in touch with you if oh, they yes. wanted to look up a way to, you know, get some insight or maybe meet you uh, for... You mentioned you're going to be doing a class. I, I at the wigwam, uh, in uh, onset Wareham, Mass. The wigwam is a really wonderful place. It's mm -hmm. a it's a teepee kind of like structure. It's octagonal, I believe, and it was built in the late 1800s to honor the Native Americans mm -hmm. who, who were mistreated greatly by mm. the people who came to this country. Mm -hmm. And there are some wonderful uh, pictures of, of natives and, and in the wigwam and some wonderful artifacts. And uh, it's a special place. It's not heated, but it will be opening on May 1st. And it usually stays open till through October. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it is open six months of the year. And it is going to be opening this Sunday, the 7th. Okay. And they have services from 10.30 to 12. Mm -hmm. And I will be there a lot of Sundays, and I do the music there sometimes. Mm -hmm. I play hymns on the guitar. Uh, that would be one way to get in touch with me. Okay. Do I, you... I do have a website. Yes. Uh, and my website is... Uh, goes with my other business, which is Treasure Time. 
and it it actually is working with children to put on plays about picture books. But I do have a website which is www.treasuretime.org. Okay. And Perfect. my phone number and everything is on that website. Okay. And uh, actually, psychic time and time that you spend with people of like mind, I believe, is treasure time, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was talking with a friend today who about something like meditation. She did yoga, and, and she said she was sick all the time and that she didn't, um, that, that she wasn't very grateful for anything. And uh. so I was trying to get her. And she said she didn't believe in any of that stuff like <laughs> meditation. So some people just don't understand this stuff at all. Right. You and get what you put out. It's kind of their loss. Right, 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 right. <laughs> because I just believe that all this spiritual and psychic and all the wonderful things that we do in the spiritualist church as spiritualist mm -hmm, mm -hmm. has just enhanced my life so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right, and it's especially when you meet like-minded people and whatnot. I'm glad um, that we started the show off with suggesting people activate their DVR because what you shared with us today, they can go out and get a book on palmistry and now replay what they've what you shared with us and look at the book and get more insight as to what's going on with the, the lines of the hands, the shapes of the hands. I, I, that's very interesting. Thank you. There are a lot of different books and there are a couple that I would recommend. Uh, well, let's have it. <laughs> I, it's, I didn't bring it in. It's oh, okay. in my car, but I could show it at the beginning of the next show. <laughs> okay. Well, why, why don't you? What's the name of it? Do you, uh, the name of the book? It's something about hands. Oh, you can okay. See <laughs> excellent. Excellent. You can see how good I am at remembering. Hey, it doesn't matter. You you have a lot to share with us, and we were very grateful that you were able to stop by and help us out today. Well, so. it was fun to stop by in Rhode Island, and I, I do like this little state. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to add one thing to uh, healing and recovery that has, shows a lot of success, and that's a list called an attitude of gratitude mm -hmm. that is used in the 12-step recovery programs, mm -hmm. and that's the first thing you go mm -hmm. to, you know. The, well. I've seen it play out in my life, so I, you, I agree with you 100%. You know, and that, that's a good choice of remembering it, a good term, attitude of gratitude, right? Thank you. Thank you. Mm. So, well, Lee Drescher, it's, it's great to have you with us today. And um, thank you. Thank you for sharing your time. And um, we have another show lined up, so we'll be able to expand and you'll be able to share more with us and uh, treasuretime.org is what you share great yes great and, and it was a pleasure to be here great 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 and then you have a nice dinner oh i'm looking forward to it <laughs> absolutely well that's great that's great we work through we work through our dinners so we have to have a good dinner afterwards right. well it sounds good and it was yeah, I, th I think it was, I just had a little snack because I just... Uh, oh, yeah, you got to hold yourself over. I think it. Right, right. Excellent. So I appreciate you sharing what you saw in my hand. It inspires me to, um, I have a book at home, you know, so I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to review in my mind what you share with us. Um, we do have a spot on YouTube, Psychic Holistic Spotlight RI. And, you know, in a We're month not, or so. Are we? What's that? Yeah, we'll be on, we'll be on. No, but are we filming now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're oh. still talking.